Hello everybody. So, I've got a quick video here. Uh, it's kind of a uh, heads up or a warning for you folks <clears throat> that do your own uh, home mechanic work and uh, work on your own lawnmowers and vehicles and stuff like that. Uh, so what I have here is a 17 and a half horse Briggs and Stratton in tech. Uh, so what was going on, uh, my symptoms were anything around half throttle and above, it would begin missing, uh, backfiring, and just bog down, zero power, wouldn't engage, it would die as soon as you tried. I uh, went through the usual suspects, uh, carburetor, adjusted it, valve lash, all that good stuff, <clears throat> but uh, I even changed the coil on it, uh, nothing seemed to help, uh, so you know, from that moment forward, that's when you start digging down into the, the engine. Um, I had changed the uh, camshaft, put a new one on it, so the compression trigger was new. Uh, had everything in time, put it back together. Uh, and and it, it was still doing it. So what uh, what eventually happened is, is <clears throat> I had bought a new carburetor at the beginning of the year, and I put it on. And there's a little pin inside of those carburetors that will hold the uh, bowl float. And uh, there's a spring and it, it lets the bowl pivot on that pin. I'm sorry, the float pivot on the pin. So it will actually uh, keep the gas from overflowing and stuff like that. <clears throat> so the, the warning or the heads up that I'm giving you is if you order in one of those carburetors, please do take the bowl off and make sure those parts are connected i don't know how they come undone most of them some of them have a, a key on them that you have to literally remove to get the uh, pin to slide out uh, some of the cheaper ones may not but usually they're under tension so they don't go anywhere but the one i got in apparently did and somehow some way it got up in through the carburetor down the intake through the valve and into the piston and what this did <clears throat> was let me see if i can get an angle do you see that score right there along the piston wall and all the way down through the piston wall or the sleeve whatever you want to call it there is a line and on the actual piston itself <clears throat> right there now what that did was pinch one of the compression rings it was pinched completely uh into the depth of the the piston so it was uh actually less diameter than the piston itself and, and those are made to uh expand outwards against the uh the the piston wall the sleeve and uh with heat and stuff like that they'll they'll compress and decompress and move in and out and it'll allow or not allow, you know, compression through and oil and, and things like that. But this one was a compressed oil. The oil uh, ring seemed to be good. But the compression ring was completely pinched, not allowing it to expand correctly, allowing whatever it wanted to to get through. Uh, and it was actually broke. So, yes, I, I, I racked my brain where that piece of metal could have came from. And I took the float off the carb and, well, I'm sorry, I took the bowl off the carb and the float was just missing, missing the pin. I'm not 100% sure that's what happened, but I can't think of anything else that could have gotten through my intake to do that much damage. Uh, and things just don't generally come, you know, through the exhaust. And being that the oil rings and the bottom compression ring was good, I, I'm, I'm going to assume that it didn't come from the bottom. Uh, it definitely came from the top. You can see it came from the top. Okay, so now, <laughs> now I get to uh, uh, put some new rings on. <clears throat> Hopefully, I can uh, get maybe a small grinding wheel in there and open that up a little bit. Man, it's got to be close. It's, the tolerance of these things are unbelievably close for them to function correctly. 
I uh, hope I can get it right. I might just go ahead and buy a new piston head. But if I can get it, you know, close and to where the ring actually does its job, I don't know. As far as the sleeve goes, <clears throat> I'm going to get in here. And I'm going to try to get the roughness out a little bit. Just barely tap it with a real fine sanding wheel. I think that groove right here can be buffed. So I don't think I'm going to have to dig. Hopefully, being that this is at the top of the stroke, I won't, uh, I won't lose too much compression if I knock just a hair of metal out right there. I might just deburr that rather than digging to try to get it smooth. I, I, we'll see how that goes. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to approach this. Uh... It, it worst come to worst, so you just have to get a new motor. Uh, so anyway, the reason I'm making this video is to give everybody a heads up. When you get a new carb or any new part that has moving metal parts on it that you're going to install on your engines, it just kind of give them a, a cursory glance at the least. If not, take the bowls and stuff like that off. Make sure the floats are, are working properly and have all the parts necessary to keep them working properly and that there's not anything missing. Uh, like I said, anything exhaust-wise, you, you don't really have to worry about that. That's just not the way the air moves. But from <clears throat> from the intake valve back, please check it. I mean, even even uh, filters, you know, make sure there's not any metal particulates on them. <sighs> Dude, I don't even know what to say. Just the finest shavings of metal will absolutely destroy a piston wall, believe it or not. There's just so much compression in there and so much pressure. <clears throat> anyway, this is uh this is gonna be interesting. But uh yeah. Please do check your cards. Check everything you replace in take valve back. Or else you're gonna be doing what I'm doing. Alright, y'all. Have a good day.